Hey guys, it's Darius. Welcome to InventBox, and I hope that you're ready to do some MicroPython coding. Now, in the last video, I showed you how to upload MicroPython to the SparkFun ESP32 thing. And we hooked up a serial terminal and started sending it Python commands and having them executed right there on this tiny little chip, this little $5 processor. That's amazing. Though we haven't actually run a full program yet, so that's what I'm going to show you how to do in this video. And we are going to write a program that will make the little blue LED blink on and off. So I am excited to get started. So I just have an empty folder and I opened it in text editor. So let's make a new file and call it main.py. Now, if this were um, if this were a desktop computer, it wouldn't matter what you call the file because at the end of the day, you're just going to run it with python myfile.py. Okay, but this is not a desktop. This is a processor and it needs to know what you want it to do as soon as you turn it on. So because of that, the MicroPython has a convention. Um, it's it's instructed to to as soon as you reset it or turn it on, it will look for a pi a uh, Python file called main.py, and if it exists, it's just going to go ahead and run it. So that's why I called it main.py. So now, how do we make this LED blink? I'm now going to introduce to you a MicroPython uh, built-in module that we will be spending many tutorials getting to know all of the little things that go into this module. And it's called the machine module. We can import machine. And inside of machine, there are functions and classes that allow us to control all of the little hardware bits inside the processor. You know, things like turning pins on and off, just like we want to do today. The first, the first class that we are going to learn how to use from machine is machine.pin. And uh, it's a class, so we can create an instance of it and give it a pin number, set it equal to, you know, some store the instance in a variable, and then we can turn the pin on and off and do stuff. But first we have to figure out, okay, what pin number is this actually? On the board, you can see, hopefully you can see it's pretty tiny. Otherwise, you can just look it up online, but pin 5 is right across from the blue LED, and yes, the LED is connected to pin 5. Okay, so we created a machine.pin instance, and it knows that it is associated with pin 5. However, um, when you first create the pin, the default mode is digital input but we want it to be a digital output so that we can turn it on and off so we'll provide a second parameter pin dot and we'll give it pin dot out um, so that yeah it'll, it's now configured as an output pin at this point there are uh, two two and a half ways of turning a pin on and off. The first way is using the uh, pin dot on and the dot off methods. I mean very straightforward and they're even really short like uh, very short function names so you don't have to type very much. The other one, the other, so this is one then we have two. The other way is kind of a combined of both of these. 
uh, this function is led.value and if you give it a zero it turns off and if you give it a one it turns on but there's a third thing you can do with this one and if you give it no parameters at all then it will actually return the current state so if you turn the pin on and then you call led.value it will return one if you turn it off then you call pin.value it will give you zero so that can be useful so that's um two and then there's actually a shortcut that's why i said two and a half and the designers of MicroPython figured that since turning a pin on and off is probably the most common thing you'll do with it, they made a shortcut so that you can just run LED as or run the pin call call the instance as if it were a function and give it a zero or a one to turn it on and off. And that's one of those things that I like about Python. It's very configurable. You can override um, and pretty much make it do whatever you want. You, there's no way you could do this sort of thing in C++. So, you know, way to go, Python. All right, so we've got plenty of ways to turn pins on and off. So at this point, we pretty much know enough to make a Blink program. Now I'm going to use while true to create an infinite loop. And we'll start by turning the LED on. And now we need to make the processor sit and wait for a second before turning the LED off. Now if you're thinking like, okay, what can we use to make the processor delay? Well, this is Python, and we actually have access to almost all of the standard library. So it turns out you solve this in the same way that you would on the desktop. Uh, from time, import sleep. Now, if you don't have a lot of, if, you, if you're not familiar with Python on the desktop, the sleep the built-in sleep function, you just give it a number of seconds and the processor stops doing stuff for that many seconds, which is exactly what we want. Okay, um, this is pretty much done, except you may notice that I used machine.pin here and I really should say machine.pin there, but um, I'm starting to get tired of writing machine, machine, machine. So I'll I'll use a direct import and just get get the pin class by itself, since that's the only part of machine that we're using. And that's nice right there. Okay, um, we're going to use Ampy from Adafruit or Adafruit or something to upload our main.py onto the processor. And the command to do that is Ampy put main.py. Very, um, very intuitive. Oh, okay, so. If you happen to get issues with your USB, actually I'm kind of glad this happened so I can show you how to fix it. At least on the ESP32, I found that holding down reset, unplugging it and plugging it back in, um, well it actually puts it into, I've got it in bootloader mode. But I, with with uh, with doing that, I was able to get it to upload now. So I can use ampy ls to list, and there it is, main.py. 
All right, but it's still not blinking. So you may wonder, am I doing something wrong? Um, and no, because remember I said that main.py runs anytime that you reset it or power it on. And we haven't done any of those two things yet. So go ahead and reset it. And there you go, it's blinking. Okay, so that's, that's the majority of this tutorial. Um, there's one little thing I wanted to touch on, and that is, uh, it, it's, it may, let's see, if you've ever worked in Arduino, which maybe you have if you're learning MicroPython, it might seem awkward that we are creating a pin. Like, come on, you can't create pins. Um, they're already all predefined and you know they're they're created by the manufacturer so why do we create instances of pins in python well uh, i mean you might argue that it was a poor design choice i don't think it was um, but it, it, coming from that arduino mindset it can be a little confusing at first because you know what happens if you create a second pin 5 or a third pin 5 um, so you actually can do this and you can play around with it if you want. Um, you're not going to break anything. All that happens is you create an instance of the pin class that references pin 5. There's only one pin 5. Um, but you'll have three instances that all have control of the same pin 5. And obviously if you tried to like, oh, I'll create pin 150, it is you know, it's going to error on you, so that doesn't work. Sorry, you can't just magically create pins. Now, I said that I don't think this was a bad design choice because what it means is we can store all of the configuration information in the instance. Um, so everything that we need to know about the current state of LED is stored inside of the LED instance. You know, that's how we're able to say LED.value and it can calculate, or it doesn't, I mean, it, it can um, tell us what the current state is. And we'll see even in the future tutorials when we start changing modes, it'll be very handy that that information is stored right there in the instance. Um, so I'm not at all opposed to this object oriented convention um, but it I suppose it could be a, a hurdle if you didn't understand it correctly so I wanted to clarify a little bit how that works all right well thank you for watching we will do some more interesting stuff in the next video but for now I'm just gonna let this thing sit here and blink <laughs>